thinking. So automatically node modules come in, right? Yeah. Save this. And then go back to command line and say node. index.js. Let's say server is running on so and so port. I copy this path. Open the browser. Paste it here. And here I get the response. Yes. Is that clear? So this hello world is, is does it not come as a JSON or any other XML format? It actually comes as a JSON only, but your mm -hmm. response right now is uh, automatically translated by the uh, browser here. So the response is actually JSON response only. Let's see if the browser somehow shows it. it also depends on how we are sending it, right? So we can send a JSON object. Explicitly. So now, it's, now this will act like almost like an API, right? Right, right. This is an API only. API only, okay. And you can directly compare it with web APIs and .NET. And see how easy it is. It is more based on conventions only, just like mm -hmm. web APIs, right? Yeah, yeah. So like get, you have the other methods also. Post, you uh, have uh, post, post, you have put. Hmm. Right, you have purge, you have uh, delete. Then other HTTP verbs are also there. Understand? So whichever verb you want to use, you can actually target it. See? You have apply. Then you have. So, uh, so I get given a let's yes. say we have a you know, uh, requirement where you know we need to implement a API. So, mm -hmm. what would the the you know significant uh, factors that we can consider so that we can go with the you know dot uh, net core web API or Node.js web API? So as I said, if your work is involving lots of uh, decision making with lots of data being processed before being sent as a response, right? In that case, better you go with .NET Web APIs. If it is like give and take, like I send the request, some data is ready in the processed format. I need not do much on it. Uh, I just want to return it back. Straightforward. I can probably then go for node. Little bit of formatting is okay. Basic okay. conditional logic is also okay. Mm -hmm. I'm saying too much logic, too much decision making should not be there. And too okay. much processing should not be there, especially if the data is huge. With small amount of data, even if it is complex processing you are doing, that's fine. With Node.js also. Understand? Sure. Okay, so like even though if we get started with some, you know, assuming that it will not be complex, basic only, yeah, but yeah. Uh, as an application grows, maybe you can just uh, migrate can same migrate, logic right? to web migrate. API, right? Oh, okay. And you can make sure that the port remains the same. So your clients need not be re implemented, right? Because for clients, it's an API. Client need not know whether it, the API is implemented using Node and Express or by using .NET Web APIs. Yes. For client, there is an endpoint where a specific request goes and a specific response comes back. So without affecting the client, you can just do the migration. Right? And it could, it, it could be a gradual migration also. You may not need to migrate all the implementation altogether. One by one, based yeah. on the uh, criticality, you can do the prioritization and then you can plan the migration accordingly. Make sense? Yes. So here we can do just like in our uh, .NET 
wave API. We get the versioning, uh, all those things here. Mm. Versioning, yes, and yes. Uh, data annotations. Yes. So just that the syntax will be JavaScript yes, specific. Sir. Yeah. And it will not be taking a lot of time for you to understand it because you have already done that in web APIs. It is just about, you know, understanding the new syntax here. Conceptually, it is the same thing. Make sense? Right. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions here? So you are telling about the migration means from uh, uh, web dot net to node js we can migrate either way not dot net to node or node to uh, dot net depending on the need so in market uh, what is the demand of this uh, node js uh, see as i said again uh, i'll repeat that for most read write operation kind of stuff like LinkedIn, or if you talk about Netflix, these kind of services don't require too much of processing of data with lots of decision making, right? It's mostly give and take. So for such kind of requirements, Node.js is highly preferred. There is no licensing involved. It's lightweight, it's fast. There is not much setup required as well, right? You just need to have Node environment, runtime environment installed on the server, and you get started. Understand? Yes. Chatting applications also use Node.js a lot. Because Node.js makes it really, really quick. It's give and take only, right? The message from one user to be taken and given back to another uh, user, right? Node.js plays the role of mediator. Yeah. Okay, so we'll end the session here itself. This is enough for us to understand the very, very required things about Node to proceed with the next level, like TypeScript and uh, then uh, moving on to ReactJS. So, why we are doing this? Ultimate target is ReactJS only. But then ReactJS has got uh, the coding, uh, which can be done using JavaScript and TypeScript. Looking at the modern requirement, TypeScript seems to be the better option. So TypeScript we will be learning. But the entire environment is configured and managed by Node environment. That's why we initiated with Node. Understood? Yes. Yes. So in tomorrow's session will be actually going ahead with TypeScript. Some object oriented programming also will be looking at. Yeah. OK, so the plan is to cover React JS, right? React. Yes. So this, these are all the stepping stones towards that. Yeah. OK. OK. So Thanks, that is sir. it for today. See you on Monday. 9:30 here. Happy weekend. Happy weekend to you. Happy weekend, team. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.